read you a scripture out of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah said, Oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Your counsels are of old faithfulness and true. He said, I will exalt you and I will praise your name for you have done wonderful things. Come on, is there anybody tonight that can testify that the Lord has done something wonderful in your life? Maybe you were lost in sin and somehow Jesus brought you out. Maybe you were on the hospital bed, sick with COVID, on a ventilator, but somehow Jesus brought you out. Maybe you were in need of a financial breakthrough on the cusp of financial loss, but somehow or another, Jesus brought you out. Come on, is there anybody knows that the Lord is worthy to be praised? For He has done wonderful things. Oh, come on, church. Hallelujah, come on. It's so good to be in the house of God with you tonight. And we're just gonna go after God. Is anybody ready to go after God? If you're ready, I want you to lift your voice and pray with me, and let's just invite the King of Kings into the house tonight. Father, Lord, we love you. What a privilege it is to honor here in your name. God, we don't count it lightly. We don't take it for granted, God. But we know that we know that we know that a king is in our midst. So we, because royalty is in the house, we're going to give you all, Lord. God, we're going to give you an offering of praise, Lord. We're going to give you an offering of worship. And we just ask that it be pleasing unto you tonight. Oh, Lord, we don't have to invite you here because this is your house. We're just thankful to be here. So, Lord, we just give you all the glory and the honor and the praise and with a shout the church said amen come on if you're ready to praise the lord why don't you just make your way down to this altar maybe some of you need some room to get in and get free for god why don't you just go ahead and step down and get in the river tonight come on if you're ready to go after god let's go come on put your hands together tonight
shout your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment. And oh, break come on, just like that again. All of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out. Oh, come on. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment and break every chain. Oh, all of my fear, I will turn into praise. Shake off despair as I sing out your name. A victory dance, I will dance out in faith. I will crush disappointment. Say, oh.
tell him tonight? Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing, oh yes, better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Oh, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and 
Lift your hands, lift your hands. See, you're the only one who can, and we thank you for that. Come on, get thanksgiving and gratitude on your lips all across this room. that up. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, and generations bowing down in worship to sing a song of ages to the Lamb and all who've gone before us all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lamb a thousand generations Falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us, and all who will believe, will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. For your name is the highest.
worship the Lord. Dylan, would you come here, bud? You? Dylan? Yeah. Can you just jump up there. Amen. I want you to pray, all right? I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me to let you pray. There's a lot of people in this room that can pray, but I feel like you're the one that's supposed to. we just say there's no one like you in all the earth there's no one but you there's no one we'd rather worship but you King Jesus and Lord I thank you that when your presence is in the room it means you've walked into the room and so Lord I'm asking tonight Lord would you walk into this place and not leave us the same Lord would we cry out like Paul not leave us this way but change us tonight Lord God, we don't want just a moment, just another meeting. God, we want to meet with you. We want to be changed by you. God, we want to see you face to face, eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth, God. We want to know you in all of your ways. We want to know your power, your healing, your miracles, your signs, and your wonders. And we want to know above everything your amazing love, God. And then we want to become that to the world around us. And so, Lord Jesus, I'm asking tonight, would you show us your face? Would you show us your grace and your mercy? And Lord, would we hear your heartbeat like never before? God, I ask, would we know the heart of Jesus in this place to transform, to change lives? And Lord, I thank you that you're coming in great power and great authority in this place. Lord, you're coming with a sword in your mouth to divide both soul and spirit, bone and marrow. And Lord, your word comes to transform us Hallelujah. Your word comes to change us. Yes. And Lord, tonight I ask God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, would you come, our amazing lover of our souls, Amen. and change our lives tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Stay right there. I'm going to work you a little bit tonight. <laughs> I want everybody that needs healing in your body to raise your hand. Everybody that needs healing in your body to raise your hand. I've got one more prayer for you to pray. Yeah, absolutely. All right? All right. If you, if you need healing for your body, keep your hand up. Just raise your hand. That's a point of contact. God knows exactly where you are and what you need, and he's going to touch you. No one else is going to need to touch you. Amen. He's about to touch you. Dylan, will you pray this prayer of healing? Yeah. Yeah, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, God, I ask you, Holy Spirit, would you come right now and, Lord, every bit of sickness, every bit of disease, yes, Lord. Father, every bit yes, Lord. of iniquity, spirit of iniquity, we just command it to go right now. And, Father, I thank you that you love us and your great love comes to heal. And, Father, I, I even felt like there were people with kidney issues. Yes. Like I, during worship, I felt like the Lord wanted to heal kidneys in this place. So yes. if that's you, just receive it for yourself. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for your healing power. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Come, Holy yes, Spirit, Lord. in greater measure, greater yes, power. Lord. Yes, Would you Lord. come right now, right now, Hallelujah. Father, and touch us from the top of our head, God, to the soles of our feet. Every bit of Hallelujah. sickness, Hallelujah. every bit of disease, Hallelujah. bend the knee Hallelujah. and bow in the mighty, mighty name yes, of Lord. Jesus. Lord, yes, we thank Lord. you for your healing power. We thank you for your fire. We thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you that you love each and every one of these people, Lord, and your healing hand would come upon them right now. Lord, in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you believe God's touched you tonight with healing, I want you to put your hands together. Give him praise. Praise the Lord. Well, you better not hand me two microphones. I might just preach two times. Can you turn to somebody and say, welcome to OCI tonight. I know that um, I don't want you to get too comfortable yet. We're going to pray one more prayer, and then we're going to transition into the announcements. But I just felt led of the Holy Spirit to pray one more prayer in just a few weeks, thousands upon thousands of young people are going to invade this room. Thousands of them. You know, for those of you who have never been to Warrior Fest, we can't set out chairs for Warrior Fest. There's so many thousands that come. They sit on the floor. And so um, we will have chairs around the sides for some of the adults and some bleachers in the back for some of the youth pastors and pastors who can't sit on the floor. But this room from wall to wall will be literally filled, crammed with young people who have come hurting, seeking, looking, and receiving. I remember one night at Warrior Fest, Perry, a few years ago, I remember one night at Warrior Fest that almost 1,000 teenagers got filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit in one night. That was an amazing night. So here's what I want. I, I know you just sit down and those are nice seats, but I need you up one more time with me. I want us to pray right now that the Holy Spirit will begin to work even before they get here. Listen, we got two great conferences coming up here. We have Prophetic Summit, which is also gonna be packed out from, from wall to wall, but we have Warrior Fest. We even have, um, I, I, I hate to do this without, I know you've told me, Mandy, these guys, there's some, there's a youth group coming from another country that's flying in here. Where's it from? Lithuania? Okay, so there's a, there's a, there's a youth group flying in from Europe from a small country right beside Romania, right near Romania, that's coming into Warrior Fest. We got other groups coming down from Canada Warrior Fest, and this place is gonna be literally packed from wall to wall. We're gonna be having a fire tunnel, if you guys know what that means. And I mean, this life's gonna be changed, wrecked, never to be the same again. If you wanna seed, how many of you wanna seed in that moment? Right now, 
I'm not asking for money, I'm asking for prayer, okay? So understand what I'm asking for. Right now, you can sow into that harvest. If you have ever had a teenager that you wanted to get saved, if you have ever had a teenager that was a prodigal child, if you have ever had a young person in your life, a college student, that you wanted God to deliver from addiction or some kind of, some kind of depression or anxiety, if you've ever known what that feels like, Find that place in you right now. Find that place where you prayed for them because that's the kind of kids that are gonna come here. They're gonna come, some of them are gonna be on fire and some of them are gonna, are gonna be drugged here by a friend and they're gonna think everybody's crazy on night one and they're gonna be speaking in tongues on night two. They, they won't even know what's about to hit them. So I need some people to lift up your voices like thunder, and I want you to pray. I want you to let ring the heavens right now with prayers for Warrior Fest. Come on, help me right now. Lift your voices all over this room. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare, God, that you will pour out your spirit in this Warrior Fest. God, we ask you, Lord, that these rooms will be filled with young people whose lives will be changed forever. God, we declare declare, God, that this is the moment, God. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices. Cry from that deep place. Cry from that deep place inside of you. Oh, God, we call for the hurting to be healed. We call for the bound to be delivered, Lord. God, we call for the captives to be set free. In the name of Jesus, we declare, God, that what you're doing, God, you're going to start doing right now. You're going to draw them in, Father. You're going to pull them into this room, and their lives are going to be changed. We declare that thousands will be filled with your spirit. God, that those who aren't saved will leave here saved and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. God, I call for, I ask, Lord, that you will call pastors and missionaries and evangelists, God, while they're here. Let the calling and anointing rest upon their lives. Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit move unprecedentedly in this place. God, let us see a book of Acts experience, an Acts 29 experience, God, where we are the continuation of what the church is supposed to be here doing, Lord. I pray, God, that you will pour out of your spirit in this house in a way, God, that will wreck history and change the course of families. God, change families and bloodlines and family trees because of what is going to happen in that weekend here at OCI. God, we give you praise for what you're getting ready to do, and we bless you, and we praise you for it in Jesus' name. If you believe that, I want you to seal it with a praise. Come on, put a shout on it. Seal it with a praise. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. All right, you can be seated now if you can. I don't think you're going to stay there all night, but you're going to be seated right now when you can. The reason I say you're not going to stay in your seat all night is because Tony Suarez is here to preach tonight. Listen, if you remember him the last time he was here, we almost had to repaint the building when he left. I mean, it was just a powerful night in the Lord. I'm joking, obviously, but it was an amazing night in the Lord, and we did request a song from him that I hope he plans to sing tonight because everybody's been waiting on you to sing a God Made It Fail. So I hope, how many of you are ready to hear him sing that again tonight? And I want to tell you, the first one to request it was Miss Pam Stone. So you can't leave here and let Miss Pam down, or you'll have the whole crowd mad at you. So we got to sing that tonight. Well, there's a lot of great things going on here at Omega Center International. I want you to look to the screens and let us tell you about some of the things God is doing that you can be a part of. Hey, OCI! <laughs> we are so excited to have Tony Suarez in the house, but before we get to the word... Here's your announcements. Next Tuesday, March the 26th, we are having a resurrection celebration service. <laughs> we are so excited. It's going to be a wonderful time spending time with family. We won't have kids church that night, but we are going to have a blast. And we're also going to have some desserts after service, so you do not want to miss it. I'm excited for all of it and the desserts. Who doesn't love dessert? <laughs> Attention.
Attention parents, if you have a child that is yet to be dedicated, April the 2nd is your day. We are hosting a baby dedication. So if you have a child that you would like to be dedicated, you can click the link that the QR, QR code leads you to and fill out the form. I love getting to dedicate babies. Both my kids are dedicated. All three of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's great. So we would love to do that for you. That's going to be April the 2nd. Write it down and fill the form out. If you have any questions, you can email us, info at oci.live. Attention all volunteers. If you are volunteering for Warrior Fest, exciting, <laughs> you want to mark your calendars for March the 28th. We are going to have a volunteer meeting at the ISO building after prayer. So mark your calendars for March the 28th. We are so excited. You still have time to sign up. So if you want to volunteer, be sure to do that. You can go to the Connect Lounge to do it. Our Evangelism on Fire conference is tomorrow at ISO. The doors are going to open at 8 a.m. The conference is going to start at 9 a.m. And this conference is a part of our Million Soul Harvest. We are believing God for one million souls in one year. What we're doing is we are believing that God is going to raise up 10,000 pastors who are going to reach 100 people each, which equals one million souls. And we're going to do that for free for them. And we're believing that God's going to reach the five most spoken languages of the world. And those are English, Spanish, Chinese, Hindi, and French. I think that is so incredible. That's such a great initiative. If you want to be a part of that, you definitely want to go to ISO tomorrow. Doors open at 8. The conference starts at 9. It is for the Evangelism on Fire conference, and we have seen the lineup. It's incredible. Go to ISO.org to register. All right, that's all the announcements we have for tonight. Kids, you'll be dismissed after offering. Now let's get to the Word. All right, all right. How many first-time guests do we have here tonight? Any first-time guests? Wow, I'm seeing hands in every single section. Isn't that wonderful? Let's give God praise for that. It's so great to have you guys. So we would like for you to do something, if you would. We would love for you to text the word hello to this number on the screen, 423-380-2040. If you'll text the word hello to that number, we're just going to ask you for your email address so we can send you an email welcoming you and give you any other information. And then we'll also put you in contact with someone who can answer any questions that you may have as well. I want to reiterate the very first announcement. Uh, I can't believe, now some of you call it Easter, some of you call it Resurrection Celebration, but can you believe it's already here? I mean, it's like early this year, right? So next Tuesday is our chance to do that. So I've got a sermon. I know that I've just started a series last week called God's Getting You Ready for What He Has Ready for You. And didn't we kick that series off? I mean, wow, what a service that was. I cannot wait to bring the rest of There's about six sermons in that series, by the way, and I personally think they just get better every week. But next week, I'm going to veer from that and talk about something we have to celebrate, and that is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So next week, we're going to be serving Holy Communion. We're going to be singing some songs about the resurrection. Wear your bonnet if you want to. It doesn't matter to me. I, just come the way you want to. We're going to be celebrating Jesus all night long. And I'm going to be bringing a message called Paid in Full. Is there anyone who would like to have your debts paid? All right. What if I told you a secret in advance that next week we're going to be paying some debts, all right? You don't know what kind, you don't know if that's you, but next week we're going to be paying some debts. Here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to invite one person. Now, I want you to, I want you to tell me if you're planning on taking this challenge and inviting one person. Now, I hope you'll bring your family. This is a night for family. Awaken's going to be dancing that night. It's going to be a great night. There's going to be a lot of things to celebrate. But I want everybody that would say, Dr. B, I'm planning on inviting one person next Tuesday night for our, East, for our resurrection celebration or Easter, whatever you want to call that, I want to bring one person. If you will, I want you to stand, okay? If you're willing to invite one person next week, I want you to stand, okay? Keep standing. I believe that there's more. There's more. The Holy Spirit's still working. He's still working. He's working in the back. He's working in the middle right now. I'm going to invite one person next week. All right, you can be seated. Thank you for that. And I am going to be looking for who 
whomever you invite. I hope they come with you. It's gonna be a great night. We're gonna be talking about paid in full, and as the lady has already told you, we will be having a dessert a fellowship afterwards out in the concourse. So come and bring your sweet tooth with you because it's gonna be a, a, a fun, yes. Per, Perry wants some sugar-free desserts. I promise you we'll have sugar-free desserts and it's even gonna have your name on it. There's a guarantee, all right? So Perry wants a sugar-free dessert with his name on it. Ladies, let's make it happen, all right? Very good, I know that you will. Um, so I wanna, I wanna walk you through something tonight. Last week we made this uh, great announcement that the Lord has called us back to our original vision of being guardians of the sacred fires of revival. And we have embraced that with humility and with enthusiasm. And so we have gone back to our original name of Omega Center International, OCI. And that happened just last week, okay? So we are still in full fellowship with the ramp. As a matter of fact, I talked to Mr. Rick just yesterday. They're asking me to come down and teach, and one of the ramp teachers is gonna be at the Evangelism on Fire uh, conference tomorrow. So we have great fellowship. We honor them, we thank them for what the Lord has done through them and allowed us to be a part of. That ministry is gonna continue to blossom, but we're gonna be true to our roots, and we're gonna be true to the vision the Lord has called us out to do. Guess what I'm excited about? We know how to do this. We don't, even, we don't need a handbook. We know how to do this. For some of you um, that have a local church on Sunday, uh, this is your Tuesday night revival center. For others who do not have a local church on Sunday, this is your church, and I am your pastor. So we are excited about what God is doing in this great season and it's gonna be a continuous journey. So in order to do that, we're having to move away from some of the systems that were connected to our ramp accounts down in Hamilton because they kept our books there. We're moving all of our books back in house. That's already been done. As a matter of fact, that will be finished. Uh, what is today, Tuesday? That will be finished tomorrow. So all of that's gonna be back in house. And so when you do give, it goes directly here. So we need to move from some of the systems. So in the past, if, we have, if you've seen our text to give message on the screen, you saw a QR code and a text to give number. Now what that did is that sent you to a source called push pay. So if you've done that, this only refers to, by the way, to, for recurring givers. Now if you just gave one time, you don't have to even think about this, okay? But if you have recurring giving, which I do, if you have recurring giving every week from push pay, you, you will have, that QR code would actually take you there, by the way, if you wanna use it right now, but you'll need to go to push pay and it's gonna ask you for your cell phone number. That's how you signed up. So it's gonna say manage accounts. You're gonna put in your cell phone number and you're gonna go in and cancel that account, all right? So that's all you're gonna do. You're gonna go in and cancel it. Very simple, not hard at all. That's what the page is gonna look like, all right? So if you go there and if you wanna use your phone right now, we'll give you just a minute. That QR code will take you to push pay. Then you go up there where it says manage accounts and put in your telephone number and just cancel your recurring gift. Once again, if you've just gave, if you gave one or two times on this, you don't have to do anything, all right? It just recorded that one or two gifts. This is only for recurring givers. So we are now moving to a new system that will work better with all of our systems, and I think you're gonna be excited about this because serving and giving and worshiping and giving is gonna be easier than it's ever been before, all right? So we're going to a new system that's called Tithely, all right? Tithely gives you a lot more options than we had in the other system. So when you go to Tithely, this QR code actually works tonight. So if you wanna to give tonight in Tithely, you're just gonna go there. It's gonna take you to a different kind of page and you're gonna set up your account in Tithely to give. Now, next week, we will also give you the option of a text to give number. It took, we, once, once we signed up, we had to be on a, on a waiting period before everything cleared the bank and they have to do all these tests. Anyway, I don't wanna bore you with that. It's being done. By next week, it will all be completed. So next week, when we receive the offering at our resurrection celebration, I would just say what I've always said. 
Here's a QR code and a text to give, and it will be the same as always, just with a different account. So once again, if you are using uh, push pay recurring, you will need to go in, put in your phone number, and cancel that out. Now, you can give tonight. This account, this push pay account, is going to be open until the end of this month, all right? So come April 1, we think it's just going to cancel it out anyway for you, but we want to make sure that you're in control of your own destiny <laughs> as much as you can be. So um, the other thing that we're going to be able to do with this Tithely app is that now for those of you that use Planning Center, your church app, now, and this is already ready for tonight, you can go into your Planning Center app, your church center app, and now there's a give button. You can just touch that give button and give there. So we're going to have several places for you to do your online giving. And by the way, when we did this, we realized that we have 136 people who have recurring giving every week. So that's 136 families that are giving recurring every week. So there's a lot of people that need to do that. Now, for those of you that are giving recurring on the system, you will also get an email from us. I think it went out today, or if not, it'll go out tomorrow. So tomorrow you would get an email in case you missed this announcement. We have a lot of people that give online as well. And so you would get an email and give you a phone number. Call us. We'll walk you through it. One more last thing. We will be having a desk set up right by uh, Connect Central, right by Connect, our Connect Lounge. It's going to be set up tonight. And for several weeks, Mandy and a couple of other people will be out there with her to walk you through all of this. So if you didn't get this and it was a little confusing to say, man, I don't even know where to start, go talk to Mandy. She'll take your phone, help you with it, or walk you through it. And if you want to set up your new account, she can walk you through every bit of that. So right now, we're getting ready to, ready to give for the first time on, on our app, okay? So this is our QR code for tonight. So if you want to give by, by your phone, which is how I give, and I've al I'm already setting mine up like you are, so I'm going through the same system. Or if you just want to write a check, write it out to OCI. And uh, you can write that tonight or give cash, however you prefer to give. Uh, we will be, we, we do have a new website that is launching that also has a way to give on the website. And that's, that's going to be live next week as well. And that, that's very simple to find, oci.live, because we are alive. How many of you say this with me? If it's alive, it's worth the drive. Say it one more time. If it's alive, it's worth the drive. How far do you guys drive from the Morgans? How far do you drive? Two and a half hours one way. That means you drive five hours every Tuesday night to be here, and they never miss. So listen, guys, if it's alive, it's worth the drive, right? And we have others who do the same. We have people that come from Alabama, North Carolina, Georgia, lots of people that come in from other places every Tuesday night. So it's great to have all of you tonight. All right, so let's go ahead and prepare our hearts to give to the Lord. We're going to leave this at, we're going to leave this QR code on the screens if you want to give that way. If not, we'll just, uh, you can just give however you feel that. Let's stand one more time and let's ask the Lord for his blessings. Father, I want to thank you, Lord, that you have blessed us in a, by giving us this wonderful new season that we embrace and we're excited about everything that you're getting ready to do. God, we, we're not only excited about what you're going to do, we're excited about what you're already doing. Lord, there are roots and there are fruit right here that we will be harvesting, God, for your glory and for your kingdom. So we ask you, Father, that you will allow the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch your hearts, that we will be able to give the way that you want us to give, and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. If our ushers would come, for those of you that are bringing your gift tonight, let's go ahead and march and bring our gifts. For those of you that need the QR code, it's on the screen.
right, our kids are being dismissed to kids' church right now. If um, I think most of them have already left, but if not, they're waiting on you at the back. Feel free to go back there now, and they've got a wonderful, exciting program waiting on you tonight. You know, one of the things that I'm excited about for the Evangelism on Fire course tomorrow, I, I hope you understood what's happening. We're filming a course for the first time in five languages. We're filming it in, um, in English and Spanish and French and Chinese and in Hindi. And we have different teachers for these courses. The amazing thing about this is we're already working with several networks to get this out. One of those networks is called the Go Movement. Now, we're trying to reach a million souls by training for free 10,000 pastors in these languages and asking them to win 100 people. This is really going to be simple math. Um, when I talked to the, to the uh, founder of the Go Movement, and he agreed to this. By the way, that, that's a European movement over in Sweden. And when I talked to him about doing this, he said, well, Dr. Cutshaw, do you, you know what we do, don't you? We work with one million churches. You're trying to win one million souls. If we send out these five courses because we work in all those languages, he said, you're going to win a lot more than a million people, a lot more than a million people. He said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. When I talked to our brothers in the underground church of China, they said, your goal is way too small. We're going to win a million in China by ourselves." I talked to the brothers in India who are, we're, we're, we're training them in Hindi. And they said, brother, I don't know where, where you got this goal, but India can win a million souls by herself. I mean, it's like something when the Lord asked me to do it, it was like, okay, God, I, this, is a big, this is a big ask. Show me how. He gave me a simple plan and a lot of connections. And now it looks like we are set for a multi-million multi-million soul harvest around the world. How many of you think the time is now? The time is right for this harvest. So tomorrow is the beginning of that, and we've got a lot of great teachers that are coming in for this, and some of those are our, are our very own teachers, and we are one of the guys that will be there tomorrow as our own. I saw Nick here a, t a couple of minutes ago. Did he step out on me? I think Nick must have just stepped out. Anyway, Nick Walker is going to be there, and also Pastor Adam Bauer. Don't you love this guy? Stand up, Adam. Adam's one of our favorites around here. He's one of our favorite teachers at ISO, and also we love it when he comes here and speaks as well. Some of you will remember that night that he literally trained people in how, how to pray for people who are sick. It was absolutely an amazing night. Uh, to, uh, Tony Suarez is one of our teachers as well for this course and many, many others. It's just going to be an amazing time. Tony needs no introduction, but I want to go ahead and give this man of God a proper introduction. So Tony Suarez is the founder of Revival Makers, a spirit-filled evangelistic ministry that travels from church to church as well as hosts events, tent revivals, healing services, and crusades around the world. As a matter of fact, he may tell you this, he's leaving here, he's getting ready to do tent crusades across the border down by Texas and Mexico. And there, he's got a team that is driving the entire border, a thousand miles of the border, and they're going to be praying over the border for 1,000 miles and have key prayer stations that they're going to meet up with other people and pray at. I mean, this guy is, is, a, is a, a true world changer. He's a third-generation Pentecostal preacher, and that won't surprise you once he gets started. Tony's greatest passion in life is preaching and teaching about Jesus and watching God save and heal. He's a regular host and guest on TBN, the Victory Channel, and other Christian stations. His preaching ministry and program, The Revival Makers, can be found daily on various Christian outlets. In addition to his ministry work, Tony also serves as the Chief Operating Officer of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference, which is the nation's largest Hispanic Christian organization that serves more than 40,000 congregations in just the United States alone. 40,000 congregations in the United States as well as thousands of other Hispanic churches abroad. We are honored tonight to have a guy who's one of our favorite preachers anyway. And by the way, he's preaching at Warrior Fest too. So this is a little prelude to that. Come on, I want you to give a proper OCI welcome to this great man of God, Tony Suarez, as he comes. 
Help me give God praise in the tabernacle tonight for what he is about to do. If you stay standing for just a moment, I was born and raised in Chicago. Um, first off, I didn't know that Brother Perry Stone was going to be here tonight, and uh, he's a hero to me, and so I feel a little extra pressure tonight. But I was born and raised in Chicago. I started watching Brother Perry on Channel 38 with a guy named Jerry Rose, and I remember, I can distinctly remember a teaching that Brother Stone did with Steve Muncy talking about the coming of the Lord uh, I, I can remember enough, it was this, uh, a, a teaching about the secret name of God that only a select few in Israel know, and if they were to speak. Anyways, I got saved, because I, I mean, I'm a church boy, but I was probably going to go to hell. But when I heard that teaching, I said, Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to be here when, when the dirt turns into the secret image. And, and, so anyways, he's had, he's had an incredible impact on my life. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what happened to me the last time I was here. But what I want to tell you is uh, I was born and raised in Chicago. And I moved to Virginia Beach 19 years ago. I didn't know anything about farms, um, rural areas. I still think it's weird to say the word rural. Um, but they took me out to a farm. They want to show me a farm. By the way, this is probably the first time I've ever preached in sneakers, by the way. If my dad... My dad, I was raised holiness. If my dad in heaven sees me preaching in sneakers, he's probably going to come out of the grave and kick me tonight, by the way. But I was on this farm, and uh, farmer's showing us everything, and blue sky, and he just starts sniffing. And he looks around, he said, it's going to rain. I said, huh? He said, it's going to rain. He said, I asked him, I said, how, how do you know? He said, I smell it. I smelled cows, horses, and grass. But as the Lord lives, about an hour later, it was raining in that part of Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to rain tonight. It's going to rain. Signs, miracles, and wonders. It's going to rain the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if you ask me, how do I know it? I smell it. I feel it. I sense it. It's in this room. And you better get ready. I don't know what you came for, but you better get ready for an outpouring of the Holy Ghost because I just felt the shift in the spirit. I just felt something change in this atmosphere. I just felt the Holy Ghost show up. And I believe that anything is possible. I leave tomorrow to start a tent revival on the southern border. And I'm going to be very vulnerable with you right now. It's not very word of faith-ish, but just humor me for a moment. Every time I'm going to do something for God, that jerk devil, forgive me, the Chicago me is coming out. But every time I'm going to do something for God, he attacks my family, he attacks my kids, he comes against my house. I was late for church tonight because he did something else to my kids. I was sitting in that car frustrated saying, Lord... Every time. And I, and I texted my wife. I said, Gina, I, I, I got to preach tonight. I, I need your help. I need you to, I need you to, I just, I just need help. And this is what she texted me before Brother Brian asked me to sing. By the way, I'm not a singer. There's only two people in the world that ever, have, ever asked me to sing. My mother and Brother Brian. <laughs> but Gina texted me. She said, everything's going to be okay. She said, just stay calm and recognize it's an attack of the enemy but as you like to sing, God's going to make it fail. So I just declare tonight that the enemy has raised up like a flood against my children. He's come against your children. He's come against our reputation, our family, our money, our ministry. I'm talking about all of us. But we declare tonight, God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything the devil tried, COVID, racism, drama, money issues, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. And I'm going to come home from Texas and tell you that everything the devil tried, God made it fail. Now 
let's sing it like Pentecostals. God made it fail. God made it fail. And everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. It's my favorite song. God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it. Come on, someone clap and give God praise because the enemy tried, but God made it fail. Sickness came, but God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried. If that's your testimony, give them praise tonight. I'm a witness. I'm a living testimony that the devil tried, but God made it fail. The devil tried to shut me down, but God made it fail. The devil came against our finances, but God made it fail. God, I'm here to testify and to praise God that every time the enemy comes against me, God made it fail, and he's about to do it. He's about to do it again. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Goodness. I'm getting drunk up here. Get, might need my own little personal catcher today. Shoo. The Lord knew. Pastor, if I'm being almost, uh, honest, I almost canceled because that dumb devil. I'm just being ver very vulnerable and transparent with you. Every time I want to do something great for the Lord, he comes and he attacks. We're going to give him a black eye this week in Texas. I've asked the Lord for 5,000 souls. And I got a report today from our street evangelism team that's already there. We don't even start till Thursday, but as of today, they've already had over 400 people that have prayed, have been healed, have accepted the Lord, have signed up to get water baptized. The southern border is an area of a lot, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. A lot of crime, a lot of drama, a lot of arguing. I was on a program called Flashpoint, and Gene Bailey looked at me and he said, Tony, God wants you to go to the southern border and have a tent revival. Well, what do you do on live television? Say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray about it. <laughs> so I said, okay. And so we've been putting this thing together. We'll be there for 11 days. We're starting in El Paso, and then we're going all the way to McAllen. Now, I wish I could tell you that I had prophetic insight to know where to go. That's just the two cities where I had friends that would let me come to a tent revival. But when I looked at the map, El Paso is all the way by New Mexico. And then on the other side of Texas and McAllen, it, it, it's the most extreme points of the southern border between Texas and Mexico. And the Lord, the second thing the Lord asked us to do was to raise up a prayer army that would pray along the entire southern border. It's 1,254 miles. So we have intercessors that are gathering with us in Texas. They're going to start in El Paso. We're going to just get them sloppy drunk in the Holy Ghost in El Paso. We're going to throw them in the van, everybody but the driver. They told, we need a designated driver, so we got a good Lutheran that's going to drive. And I don't make those jokes. We're live on the internet, but we got a good man. We'll get him tipsy later, but not while he's driving. And they're going to leave El Paso and start driving. They have one job and one job only. They're to pray over every mile of the southern border, and they're to speak the name of Jesus over every mile of the southern border from El Paso all the way down to Brownsville. We're going to speak the name of Jesus over that entire border. I felt the Lord remind me that in Genesis chapter 2, the Lord raised up an angelic border patrol to protect the Garden of Eden. And since the angels are the ministering spirits of the saints, the Lord said, you have authority to dispatch an angelic border patrol at the southern border. So we're going to go and pray that the angels of the Lord would just start encamping at the southern border and that what the border patrol can't do, the angels of the Lord can do for our nation.
I don't believe more terrorists are going to come through because the angels of the Lord are going to drive them out. I be- we might not ever read about it in the newspapers because the media will never give us credit. But when we get to heaven, I believe the Lord's going to let us know that there was less human trafficking. There was, there was less things that came because the people of God raised up an angelic border patrol. And I believe the angels are going to go into the desert and find the people that have been deserted. My father pastored in Chicago. We had, we had the testimonies of women that were raped, children that were abused and left to die in the desert by human smugglers. But angels, I'm not talking about, I think it was an angel. I'm talking about angels with wings and all brought them food, brought them water, put them on a bus and say, go to Calvary Pentecostal in Chicago and they'll tell you what to do. And they came and they got saved. I'm praying that those same angels will go into the desert and find those men, those women, those children, and that God will do a great thing. And I'm, I'm, I've asked the Lord and I've learned to not cap the Lord with a number, but I'm asking for a minimum of 5,000 people to have an experience with Jesus Christ along that southern border. And I'm asking you to pray for me. Pray for my family. Pray for that team. We leave tomorrow, and I'll be there till Good Friday. We're going to end with a great healing miracle crusade on Good Friday, and then I'm flying home, and I'm believing for at least 5,000 people to have an experience with the Lord. And, and Pastor, if it's okay, just even before I leave tonight, if you all would just, I, I, I'm Pentecostal. I need you to lay hands. I need, if there's oil anywhere, if we can go find oil, a modesty cloth, whatever you need me to do tonight, I'll fall. Whatever you need me to do, but I just, I need to leave here drunk in the Holy Ghost, ready to go home, fight devils, and then get to Texas for a great tent revival in Jesus' name. Amen? Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. All right, I got to preach. I've avoided preaching in front of Pastor Perry all night long, but I'm going to have to do it now because I was hoping y'all to shout me down at God made it fail, but I saw you put earplugs in. That wasn't very nice. If you'd go with me to the book of Jeremiah, uh, <laughs> chapter 32 and verse 17. I'm going to share with you what I believe to be the word of the Lord for many of you that are in this room tonight. Actually, for all of you that are in this room tonight. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. In case any of you are here and you've forgotten how to speak English since we got all our people coming in here. Libro de Jeremías, capítulo 32, versículo 17. Amen. Ahí está mi gente. I knew you were here. I felt my people. I knew they were here. Que viva la raza. All right. Amen. Now, again. I rented these sneakers for tonight because I wanted to be cool at the Omega Center. I'm only 43, but there's an 83-year-old Pentecostal that lives on the inside of me, so I got some old school tendencies. Would you stand with me for the reading of God's word? Amen. Jeremiah 32, verse 17. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, even though we know Jesus spoke King James. This is what I understand. So it says, O sovereign Lord, you made heavens, you made the heavens and the earth by your strong hand and powerful arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Or as the other translation says, nothing is too hard for God. Father, I ask you to use me tonight for your glory. Let everything I say and everything I do bring glory to you. And I ask that you would confirm your word with signs and miracles and wonders that when we leave this house, we'll say, surely we've been in the presence of Almighty God. And I thank you for this night. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. The sermon that I'm going to attempt to preach to you tonight is a word the Lord gave me, and he told me that I was to preach this everywhere I go until he tells me different. The genesis of this message started in the Knoxville airport a few months ago. I was traveling with my son. I live in Johnson City, uh, but we were flying out of Knoxville, and my, uh, he, my son is about to turn 19 years old. I love him. He's my oldest, and I'm trying to keep him close to me, and so I've had him traveling with me on weekends. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm not a mechanic. I don't know how to fix cars, but I see mechanics out there with their kids teaching them how to fix cars. Uh, I want want the same anointing that was on his grandfather and on his great-grandfather and on me to come on him. And so I've just been keeping him close to the fire. I'm going to bring him to Warrior Fest, and I'm just believing that God is going to get a hold of my kids at Warrior Fest. And I just had him with me. We're traveling. We're in the airport, and Cole loves the Lord. Cole doesn't always have um, what we would call... um, 
uh, decorum. Is that, it may, may, I don't know if that's the right word or yet. I'm just, I, you decide here in a minute. Uh, sometimes he doesn't know how to fake it till you make it. How about that? All right. So Cole will travel with me. He'll help me in the altars. He'll catch. He'll help me pray. He'll be with me. I'm just keeping him close, keep him close to the fire. And so we're getting on the airplane in Knoxville, flying to Denver. That's a four and a half hour flight when something very uh, non-spiritual occurs to me. It occurs to me that I have not downloaded anything to watch on that airplane. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. And I said, Lord, I need something. And so we're about to board the plane and I'm scrolling through my phone and I'm, 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 the context for the story matters because sometimes God will speak to you in the most random of, random of moments and you gotta, you, you gotta have a discerning ear. I'm looking for a movie to watch on the plane when I hear in my spirit, I hear the Lord speak to me and he says, nothing is too hard for God. Now, I'm too churchy to get that and keep scrolling. I heard in my spirit, nothing is too hard for God and I got quickened. I said, oh. And when I went back, Cole dropped his backpack and he goes, oh my God, Now? He thought I was falling out, and he got so embarrassed. Dad, stop. And so I got, I got tipsy. I legitimately, I said, Cole, I'm sorry. Ooh. And he's like, Dad, oh, my God, we're in front of so many people right now. Please stop. And so he's, like, pushing me onto the airplane, and I'm just getting on with my boarding pass, and, you know, they won't serve you if, you if you're drunk on the plane, so I can already tell that I'm not even getting peanuts, and I'm, I'm just getting on, and so he's just kind of pushing me, and we get to our chair, and I, st I still got, you know, I still got a little twitch on me, you know, and I sit, and you know how you can feel when someone's looking at you? I look to the side, and it's cold looking at me. And I know you're not supposed to swear to God and please get mad. Don't, don't get mad. You know, God's working on my boy. But he looked at me and goes, Dad, I swear to God I'll change chairs right now. I'll go sit somewhere else on this plane right now. Stop it, Dad. Everybody is looking at us. It is embarrassing. I promise I'll move my chair. I'm like, whew, whew, I'm trying. He's like, oh. So I'm trying to come out from under the influence and I get my phone out again and I open up YouTube thinking, or forgive me, I went to Instagram thinking that maybe there'd just be something soothing. But you know how Instagram tries to be like prophetic nowadays with the algorithms, they try to read your mail. And so they play you the videos that they think you want to watch, okay? So Instagram knows that inside of this 43-year-old body is an 84-year-old Pentecostal that likes church the way it used to be. When we get to heaven, if there are different departments, uh, I'm going to tell you the one I'm going to choose. You go to the one with the guitars and the bongo rooms. I'm going to the Jimmy Swagger G.E. Patterson room. I'm going to red carpets, polyester suits, and there will be a Hammond organ on my side of heaven. I'm going to be, there will be tambourine. When you walk in, you'll pick up a tambourine. You just come in. We'll be huckabucking the whole way in. That's my kind of church. And so Instagram knows what I like. And so Insta I see a video pop up on Instagram, and it is the Holy Convocation of the Church of God in Christ, 1995. The presiding bishop is about to come to the podium. All the dignitaries are around him. G.E. Patterson, Charles Blake. There's politicians here, all of the prelates, all of the bishops, all around. Beautiful service. And it's one of those old podiums that used to have seven microphones. Do you remember when we used to have, have seven microphones? One was for the tape ministry. One was for the television. One was for the VCR. One was for the live audience, and that's why back in the day when the preacher would preach, this pulpit's a little too tall for me. I feel like I'm in children's church, but the, 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 the preacher would have to preach, and the preachers would have to sway because they had to hit all seven microphones so that everybody could hear the same message. And so when I saw that video, I said, that's my kind of church. And so I clicked on the video, and the bishop leans in, and he said, I want to tell someone that there is nothing too hard for God. I said, my Lord. That is the second time I've heard that in the last 10 minutes. But Lord, you know I'm a Pentecostal, so I need confirmation because I don't know what you're trying to tell me. Some of you know what I'm talking about. You can hear it once, you can hear it twice, but you still got to hear it from the Facebook prophet, and then you got to hear it from your TikTok prophet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm in a bad mood. Can you tell? And so anyhow, I've now heard it twice. And so I go over to YouTube. And you know how YouTube likes to suck you into the videos now? They'll play the video before you can hear the video. And so I go to YouTube, and there's a choir in choir robes. You remember choir robes? Back in the day, we never had to worry about what anyone was wearing because choir robes were like the blood of Jesus. they just cover it all. Hallelujah. And so the choir is singing. You remember those old, they had those big, some of you like, what? 
in the world is he talking about? Well, we had choir robes, and they had these really big sleeves on it. It's like angel's wings. And, they, and so we'd all have this, ah, and we'd have this way of clapping where if you got too close, it'd smack you in the face. And so we were very dramatic with our clapping back then. And so I saw this choir, and they're just, ah, ah. And so I clicked to see what they were singing. Would you believe what they were singing? There is nothing too hard for God, ah, nothing too hard for God. So after the song, the Lord spoke loudly and clearly. He said, Tony Suarez, I've spoken to your spirit. I've had it preached to you, and now I've had it sung to you. I want you to tell my people, until I tell you to preach anything else, I want you to tell my people that there is nothing too hard for God. So on behalf of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I've come to the Omega Center to give you one message and one message only. There is nothing too hard for God. And if you really believed it, and if I really believed it, I wouldn't have talked so much about the devil tonight because there's nothing too hard for God. If I really believed it, I wouldn't be worried. I wouldn't be stressed. I wouldn't be losing my mind because there's nothing too hard for God. I'm here on a mission tonight to convince you and to convince me once and for all that nothing is too hard for God. He said, you're to go everywhere and you're to remind them that nothing is too hard for me. Secondly, you tell them that I said I can. And I said, you can what? He said, that let them fill in the blank. They know what they're needing. They know what they're expecting. They know what they've been praying for and you just tell them, I can. So I'm here to declare to you, God can heal your body. God can save your wayward children. God can bless that ministry. Pastor, God can give you that building. I'm here to tell you that it's not too hard. It's not too difficult. And God told me to tell you that he can. And I believe that he will. You ought to praise him if you believe it. He said, the third thing, he said, I want my people convinced that I can. He said, because many are approaching my throne with hope. I want them to approach me with confidence. I want them to come with expectation, believing that I can and that I will. It's this way. This is how I saw it in my head. I see people praying with their fingers crossed, hoping that as they say in English, que sera, sera. Where the Lord needs us to have childlike faith like they do on Christmas. A kid wakes up on Christmas and they just know that they know that they know. That when they get downstairs to that tree, there's going to be a gift waiting for them. It's time to stop approaching the throne of God with fingers crossed. And it's time to come with hands wide open. I learned the highest, what I believe to be the highest level of faith. I learned it. I was about 19 years old. I went to a healing crusade in Chicago because I was hungry for more. I wanted to see more of God. And I remember going to the healing crusade and they sang for three and a half hours. They sang every song. We were in the, the red hymnal, the blue hymnal. The, we, were in the, we, we went into the, I mean, we did them all that night. And miracles started breaking out like popcorn. No one had to lay hands. No one had to speak a word. God was so high and lifted up in that place that it was liter literally impossible to stay in the condition you were in. And I had never been in an atmosphere like that. And I was overwhelmed by what was happening. And if you can't tell yet, I can't sit still. I pace a lot. And so I paced my way out of the stadium into the lobby. I was just overwhelmed by what was happening. And when I got to the lobby, there was women that were just yank yanking, pulling on the doors. Security wasn't letting anyone else in because they were at max capacity. But these women are pulling on the doors, screaming through the door, let me in. Let me in. Security wouldn't let him in. And I saw this lady. I heard her. She said, you don't understand. If I get in there, I'm going to get a miracle. And it hit me. Oh, this is the difference. No one had ever come to my church ready to kick doors down. Don't kick doors down in Omega Center, by the way. 
No one had ever come ready to kick a door down. No one had ever driven to the church determined, if I just get in there, if I can just get in the presence of God, I know I would be healed. They did not come with their fingers crossed. They did not come hoping. They came expecting. And that's where I found what I believe to be the highest level of faith. It's called expectancy. I expect a miracle today. I expect you to be healed. I expect you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I expect your child to be delivered from drugs tonight. I expect you to be debt free. You say, but you don't know me. You're right, I don't know you, but I know your God and I know what he's able to do and he reminded me that there's nothing too hard for him. He said, I want my people convinced that I can. He said, they just have to fill in the blank. Now, this scripture that we read in Jeremiah, this term, nothing too hard for God, it's found in another portion of scripture, but with different punctuation. I never saw it before. Now, there are many preachers in the room. Maybe every other preacher saw it. I never saw it. But I found it in Genesis 18. When the Lord goes to visit Abraham and he has a conversation with Abraham about a promise that's about to be fulfilled in his life. Abraham and Sarah had desired and wanted a child. They're now in their 90s. They've never been able to have children. And the Lord and his angels come to visit Abraham. And this is what I found. This is Genesis chapter 18. And I'll park here for a moment. I just want to share with you and then, and then we'll move on and I'm going to start ministering to people. Genesis chapter 18. Uh, re- if I don't talk about verse 9, remind me to talk to you about verse 9. But in verse 10, the Lord says, I will return about this time next year. And your wife, Sarah, will have a son. Now this is the thing they always wanted. This is the thing they've been believing for. And when the promise comes, there's no praise break. No one says, hallelujah. No one falls out. No one sows a seed. No one waves a hanky. They get their promise, and the Bible says Sarah was listening to the conversation from the tent. Now, here's the context. Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time. Sarah was long past the age of having children. So verse 12, so she laughed silently. Not hilariously, not obnoxiously, silently. She laughed silently, and she said to herself, how can a worn-out woman like me Enjoy such pleasure, especially when my man is so old. That's what she said. In other words, what she's saying is, I could if I wanted to. I just don't know if he can. As of Republicans and Democrats, we're blessed because of the lion, the lamb, and the dove, and I'm blessed. There is nothing too hard for God. Now, with that said, there's always been, there, 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 there's, there, there's always been perverse spirits. But we gotta be honest, th- these, these are some perverse spirits on steroids. These are some funky devils coming after our kids. I didn't have to fight everything my kids are having to fight right now. I didn't have to, I didn't have to, I always, we all, we all had to deal with the flesh, but this is some weird stuff. But there's so much focus in the church these days about the devil. I hear more about the devil than I do Jesus. The devil, the devil, the devil, the devil, the devil. And I think the devil sits back saying, man, I wish I could do all the things they think I could do. But I'm not going to tell them different. Rather than keep our focus. Now I know, you know, I know how I started this sermon, so I'm really not preaching to you. I'm preaching to me. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna listen to it as I'm driving back home tonight, because I needed to be reminded that there's nothing too hard for God. But I have made up my mind that the reason these strange mutated devils waited till this day is because hell knew this is the generation that Joel prophesied about. This is the generation that's going to see that last increase and harvest of souls. The Bible says that when an unclean spirit leaves a man, it seeks to and fro. It it seeks a new place, and when it can find none, it says, this is what the devil says. The devil says, I will return to my house. 
The audacity of the devil to call us his house. Devil, I got news for you. This is not your house. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. But the Bible says that when that devil comes back and it finds the house clean and swept, I'm talking to some families, I'm talking to some generational legacies in this room, that when the enemy came back, he found the bloodline clean and swept. When the enemy came back, he found your children on fire and your grandchildren on fire. The Bible says that the devil will go back and get seven more spirits to attack and that usually scares us and says, oh no, he's coming back at us seven times greater. Well, that's because the enemy recognizes that you're seven times greater than the last time he raised his hand against you. So if you felt, oh, I'm preaching to me right now. Forget, listen, excuse me, I'm gonna preach to me right now. Hey, Suarez, if the devil has come back at you stronger and tougher than he ever has, it's because he realizes that you're not who you used to be and you're not where you used to be. There's some Something greater on the inside of you and the devil wants to cancel it but nothing is too hard for God it's nothing too hard for God nothing too hard for God that sickness isn't too hard for God. That debt isn't too hard for God. Those children aren't too rebellious for God. That marriage isn't so broken that God can't fix it. That ministry isn't about to fall apart. There's nothing too hard for God. God's about to put the thing back together. This nation that people are giving up on, I want you to know this nation, that there is a remnant here. You want to know why God's not done with America? Right here. If Abraham could negotiate the salvation of his family in Sodom and Gomorrah, what makes you think that God would give us any less? You want to know why God's not done in, with America? Because my children still go to school here. We're still living here. And I've been advocating before the Father saying, hey, Lord, spare the nation. Spare the southern border. Spare my family. You say, that's impossible. Oh, no, 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 no. There's nothing too hard for God. I believe. I heard what they said about the underground church in China. I heard what you said about about India, but I'm believing there's a million soul revival right here in the United States. I don't believe that rel the revival is simply relegated to third world countries. I don't believe that God can only cause limbs to grow in Africa. I'm believing that those things are going to happen here. And you say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Well, I answer you, yeah, but, but nothing is too hard for God. There's nothing too hard for God. I'm going to land the airplane, allegedly. We'll see how it goes when it's coming down. I haven't checked with air traffic. I just made a decision. I'm going to start landing. We might have to go back up. At some point, we're going to land. I came here maybe about a year ago, Pastor. I'd never been here, never seen any of this. I'm an evangelist. God brought me here to challenge me. I left Virginia five years ago after my wife passed away, had my three babies, and you know Genesis says it's not good for man to be alone. Hallelujah. So the Lord sent Gina. Hallelujah. Whew. I didn't find my thrill on Blueberry Hill, but I found it in Johnson City. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I left Virginia, and we came to Johnson City. We went and left Virginia. TBN had been so kind. They had given us use of studios. I mean, we, God had just blessed us. And then we moved to Tennessee and uh, everything's mobile. We got a few people work for us. Everybody is spread out. And I'm just, I'm just trusting the Lord. And then I came here and they say, you can't dream beyond what you've been exposed to who I started dreaming. I started walking through these buildings. I went, when I walked into brother Lowry's old office, I, I believe that was brother Lowry's there. There's, well, I don't want you to have to start selling tickets, but there's like something in the room. <laughs> there's, there's, there's something in the air. It's powerful. And I looked at everything. And then, Brother Perry, I started looking at the, what you've built. And I, and I just, I started dreaming. And I said, God, me too, Lord. This is a real me too movement. <laughs> I got a friend in Virginia Beach. Her name is Ann Jimenez, 92 years old, healthy and strong. Looks like she's 52. One day I was in her office complaining about stuff. And she said, God, Tony. God can't bless jealousy. Can't bless a critical complaining spirit. She said, when you see someone get blessed, you do two things. You say, thank you, Jesus. Me too, Lord. Because if he does it for one, he'll do it for all. 
So between you and me and the millions watching at home, I walk through this building, that building, and that building. Me too, Lord. Me too, Lord. Me too, Lord. I just started, I just started believing. But then the flesh says, but you're Hispanic. But your name is, because that, that's, I mean, let's, I'm just being real to you. I believe in being a pragmatic prophet. Let's just be honest. That happens for them, not for me. I started believing. I said, but I need a building. I need an office for the ministry. We need a TV studio. We need this. We need that. And so I start driving around Johnson City trying to find something that I could maybe afford. And I drive by that building. That one's too big. No, that one. That, no, there's no way on that one. And I find a dilapidated building that rats are using as their personal YMCA. <laughs> Holes in the roof, dents in the wall. And I looked and I said, I could probably get that one. See, I was Genesis 18, verse 9, Sarah. This is why God couldn't really be giving me promises because he knew I'd talk my way out of it. I wasn't ready. And so I start going to this building, this dilapidated, broken, run-down building. And every day I drive by it or I walk by it and I say, hey, building, the master hath need of thee. That's how Jesus told the apostles to go get the donkey. Hey, donkey. Then it's starting to Shrek, ladies and gentlemen. That's in the Gospels right there. Hey, donkey. <laughs> what is wrong with me tonight? My God, I, I need something. Do you have juice or something? Maybe a cookie. I mean, maybe I just need a little sugar in my system. <laughs> For weeks, I take my kids with me in the car. I'm like, stretch your hands out. Been hanging out with the word of faith. I'm like, stretch your hands out. Decree and declare with me right now. The building is ours. The building is ours. Say it louder. The building is ours. Louder. The building is ours. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then one day I go drive by the Rat YMCA. And someone else's sign is hanging on the building. And you know what I did? I laughed. I said, ha! Well, I guess that word of faith doesn't work. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being transparent tonight. That's what I said. I said, well... I guess all that decreeing and declaring didn't work. <laughs> Can't even afford the rat building. And then I started feeling that good old Pentecostal. You don't know if it's conviction, con you don't know if it's conviction or condemnation, but you know what I'm talking about. And it came on me, and I heard the Lord speak, and he said, Suarez, do you really want it? Because if you want it, I'll give it to you. But what I have for you doesn't fit in that building. You've never asked me about it. You've never prayed about it. You've just been out here speaking your own mind. If you want it, I'll give it to you. But what I have for you doesn't fit in that little shack. So you can either take that one or you can start believing me for what I have for you. And in my mind, I'm saying, yeah, but I'm this, and yeah, I'm that. But God was, I was at a pivotal moment where God had to remind me and show me there is nothing too hard for God. I'm here to talk to some people that have been talking themselves out of blessing, talking themselves out of prosperity, talking themselves out of new levels and new uh, potentials and new things that God could do. And you got every excuse for why this shouldn't happen and that shouldn't happen. But I come in the name of the Lord to remind you that there's nothing too hard for God. So I said, all right, Lord, all right, Lord, I trust you for what you have for me. And I just trust in the Lord. I don't have a building, and months are going by, and I'm trusting the Lord. And one thing I've learned to do living in East Tennessee is eat biscuits and gravy. Glory be to his name. And I'm not talking about that white gravy that they serve you over at the Cracker Barrel. I'm talking about that brown, greasy gravy that you got to off the bottom of the frying pan and the, ooh, glory to God. Hey, I, Father, I give you praise for biscuits. And so I'm at my favorite little breakfast place that also doubles as a gas station, eating my biscuits and gravy that cost $3.19 with the tax, glory be to his name. And I'm eating my biscuits and gravy and I'm on my phone. A lot of good things happen to me when I scroll my phone. A building appears. Whew. This one is real nice. This one, this one's made of brick. <laughs> Woo! This one's on the nice side of town. And I was about to curse my blessing, and I said, mm -mm. Mm -mm. Be careful. 
I dialed the number of the real estate agent and said, hi, uh, my name is Tony Suarez. I'd really like to see this building. She said, well, I could show it to you uh, probably a week from Thursday. I said, yeah, that's not going to be good for me. Uh, I got something coming up. She said, well, I got to be honest with you. There's three other people looking at the building. I said, I have cash. She said, um, can you be there in 45 minutes? Now, I want you to know with integrity, I did not lie. I had cash. I just never said how much cash I had. Hallelujah. They don't take cash. They don't take credit cards at the biscuit and gravy place. So I had cash. I just didn't tell her. There's integrity in there. I never said how much. I just said I got cash. And I showed up. And when I walked in the building, it was beautiful. You know, we've, it, it, the numbers don't matter. We've baptized thousands of people in water the last few years. I walked in. The first thing that stood out to me is there was a big, beautiful baptistry on the back wall. It was the width that we needed. It had enough offices that we would need. It wasn't so big that it was overwhelming, and it wasn't so small that we would just have to make it work. I felt like Goldilocks. It was just right. Hallelujah. Everything was just right, and I looked, and I, I just, I don't know, in a moment of faith, zeal, whatever you want to call it, I said, I'll take it. She said, do you want to know the price? I said, nope, I'll take it. And then she gave me the price. I'm like, oh, the devil is a liar. Whew. And I went back to the car, and I was, you know, treating the ulcer. Hallelujah. And it dawned on me I had taken another step without praying. I said, Lord, forgive me for taking another step without talking to you first. Should I even be here? Should I, be, should I even be trying to buy this building? I'm, I'm help, I feel like I'm in the Holy Ghost helping someone right now. And the Lord said, I've given you the building, I've given you the land, and I've given you the people. Go in faith. And so I went back out and I met her. We made her an offer. She said, how soon can you have the cash? I said, how soon do you need the cash? She said, we have to have it in 30 days. I said, okay, we'll have it in 30 days. I went on Facebook. I wrote to our partners. I started reaching out to friends and I just made a decision. We're not going to be beggars. We're just going to present the, we're going to present the opportunity and we're going to trust the Lord. And every day I'd get up about to do that and something would say, yeah, that doesn't work for you. No, your, 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 your partners don't do that. Your, your, your followers aren't going to respond and I'd have to talk my way out of it. And I'm not telling you I felt any heebie-jeebie come on me. I didn't feel any huckabuck on me. I just had to go stand in faith and just say, here's the vision. This is what I'm believing God for. This is what I believe is going to happen. In three and a half weeks, we had all the cash to buy the building. We closed debt free on the building. Now we're going to have a television studio in Johnson City. They're hanging the drywall right now. I believe we're doing the renovation debt free. I believe we're going to have it open in June or July and we're going to have a place to dedicate to God. And it didn't matter that I was a Hispanic living in the mountains of East Tennessee. It, all the excuses that I thought would hold me back from being blessed don't matter when you just realize that there's nothing too hard for God, and I want to encourage a ministry. There was a lady I met that told me she's going to Africa in six days. Where are you? Stand up in the name of Jesus. There's not going to be any lack. There's not going to be any financial need, and not only will there not be a need financially, but I'm believing thousands, thousands, thousands are coming to the feet of Jesus. This is your greatest season. This isn't your latter years. This is your greater years. A second wind comes upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. Us. Someone give God praise in this house. Stand with me tonight. We're going to land the plane. Nothing too hard for God. Has raised an old time holiness Pentecost. And they would say, Either it works or it doesn't. Either it's true or it's not. And if this word is true, then that sickness you're facing today doesn't stand a chance against the blood of the Lamb. If this word is true, there's not a bill, there's not a debt, there's not an invoice that God doesn't already have the gold and the silver in heaven to pay. If this word is true, if the gospel is true, if the book of Acts is true, then the promise is true for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your house shall be saved. I give prophetic utterance over a family, over a mom, a dad, a grandparent that's worshiping God tonight all by yourself. But in the name of the Lord Jesus, before this season ends, before this year ends, you're going to feel a tap on your shoulder. You're going to feel someone tugging right here on your hip and you're going to 
to look and it's going to be your grandchildren. It's going to be your children coming back to the house of God because there's nothing too hard for God. We are dangerously consumed, hoping, thinking that the hope of America lies in what happens November 2024. And I think that's what happened the last time. I think we tempted the Holy One of Israel. We said the name Donald and the name, and the name Joe a lot more than we were saying the name of Jesus. And I didn't say don't vote, and I didn't say one of them's bad, the other one's, I didn't say all of that. I know how I'm voting. But that can't be the source of our hope. Our hope is on the one who has never been voted out. He's never had an election stolen from him. He's never had his party turn against him. Our hope is in the one that the Bible says of his government, there shall be no end. The hope of America is in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if we'll put our hope back in him, then God will protect the election in November. And there won't be thievery. There won't be theft. God will protect it if we put our hope in him. Did I say too much? Our hope is in him. I don't know what you're facing tonight. I don't know what battle you're going home to. But on behalf of the Lord, there's nothing too hard for God. I know what I'm going home. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, I, tonight wasn't respectfully, I'm going to say it this way. I don't know if it was for you, but it was for me. Because sometimes you got to preach yourself out of the pit. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. It's... <laughs> As Bishop Jakes used to say, sometimes you go buy your own tape. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to go home determined. There's nothing too hard for God. This week along the southern border, there's nothing too hard for God. I, listen, I got wild. Someone asked me, who are you inviting to the tent? Everyone. Migrants, border patrol, residents of the southern border, whosoever will. They're bringing a group of children that are currently in the detention centers. They're going to bring them to the gospel tent to hear the revival every night while we're in McAllen, Texas. The border patrol, there's families that are coming. I want you to know that there are tongue-talking, Holy Ghost-filled, Pentecostal border patrol agents. I've met them. I've spoken with them. They're going to be under the tent. And the tent in McAllen is set up in a city called Far. P-H-A-R-R. If 40 years ago, R.W. Shambach was arrested and put in jail because he put a tent up in Far. I didn't know this till a week ago. <laughs> I didn't know this until after they donated the land to put the tent up. He got arrested and the charge was preaching the gospel over a loudspeaker. Do you know what I'm going to do this week? I'm going to preach the gospel over a loudspeaker. I'm going to practice medicine without a license. I'm not going to be prescribing, but I'm going to be prophesying. I'm not going to be adjusting, but I'm going to be laying hands. And we're going to go right into a city that one time arrested a gospel preacher. And we're going to go right back there and set up another tent. And we're going to keep preaching. And we're going to keep prophesying. And this time it's going to be different. Why? Because there's nothing too hard for God. All right, that's it. I'm landing the plane. If you have an impossible situation, if your situation feels impossible, if it's been overwhelming, if it's keeping you up at night and you're tossing and turning, if the doctor doesn't have an answer, the courts keep postponing, and the lawyer doesn't know what else to do, when I count to three, I want you to join me in this altar. But don't come hoping come expecting the only thing I can't tell you is when I've never understood God's timing I would do a disservice to heaven if I tried to put a time stamp on everything all I know is he can and he will 
if you've been attacked in your body, your family, your finances, your mind, anything, if tonight you need a big miracle, one of those there's nothing too hard for God kind of miracles, then when I count to three, I want you to join me in this altar on this Tuesday night. One, two, two and a half, two and three quarters. Three, come right now. Haria boho shabra kando sarabai. Koria tara boho sharabaranda sehere kosiai. Pastor that's going to Africa, I feel to tell you there's going to be a special anointing on you when you're in Africa. Africa to pray against HIV and AIDS there are going to be multiple reports of people that are going their blood is going to be healed not because of a pill but because of a prayer and when I lay my hand on your head you're going to catch your second wind and you're going to step into your greatest season and you're going to come back so addicted from revival after Africa people aren't going to know what to do with you. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. Woo. I felt that. I felt it. Lady, when I lay my hand on your head, what a chiropractor hasn't been able to do, what electroshock therapy hasn't been able to do, what stretching hasn't been able to do, one touch of the Holy Ghost. Habash Shakob side does it right now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Brother, take one step forward. I pray for your ears tonight. I don't know if it's physical, but it's definitely spiritual. And I'm changing the channel from what you've been listening to. For the old song says, whose report will you believe? It's time for you to believe the report of the Lord. For his report says you're blessed. His report says that you're prosperous. His report says he's not done with you. His report says it's time for the new thing, saith the Lord. And as I lay my hand on you, this is something I've prayed over others, but as I lay my hand on you, I saw it over you. I see question marks just floating, just floating. But this is the season where the Lord is going to send his angels, and they're going to grab hold of those question marks, and they're going to straighten them out. And what used to be a question mark is going to be an exclamation mark. And rather than say why, why, or when, when, you're going to say wow, wow, because the Lord does the work for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, there's nothing too hard for God in your situation either. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. If your name is Kimberly and you need God to touch you, would you wave at me? I just heard the name Kimberly. Hallelujah. Is there Kimberly? Oh, Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. When I, when I spoke your name, is it okay that I pray for you? Oh, she said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Got me a good Pentecostal right here. So can I pray for you? Oh, yeah. She's ready. When I called you over, I instantly felt a, a pain, a tension in my arm that came out of nowhere. So the first thing I feel to pray for is your arms. Lift both up to heaven because those are your Holy Ghost antennas. We're going to make a connection with heaven right now. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Left arm by the laying on of hands to be touched, be loosened right now. Kimberly, does that sound good? Does it sound like something you would might need from God tonight? Yeah, she said, yes. She's getting tipsy herself right now. Oh, Sister Kimberly. The Lord is going to pour out the oil of joy on you tonight. Hallelujah. You're about to catch it. You're about to catch it. You're about to catch it. For this healing the Lord gives you is not just physical, it's emotional, and it is spiritual. You've been known. People, people like coming around you because you're usually a happy person, but sometimes you've had to laugh even when you don't feel like laughing. But just, just because it's your persona, you just got to be the happy person. But now you're not going to have to fake it. This is joy that comes from heaven. Oh, God. And... Hallelujah, hallelujah. You ought to praise him like your name is Kimberly tonight. The Holy Ghost is here. I'm 
very careful prophesying speaking ministry over anybody because I'm not their pastor and I don't know you that way but I, when I looked over your way I just saw leadership I just saw leadership I just saw this authority that you have in the spirit specifically when you worship and when you, and when you sing I want you to know that there's some battles that are simply going to be won in worship there's some things you won't there's some swords you won't have to pick up because your sword is your song and when you sing it'll be just like David you'll sing and the spear of Saul will miss you. The, the, the Lord will cause him to just fly to the left and the right. You won't have to fear. You'll just praise. There's power in your praise. And I just, almost like a Pied Piper, if you will. It'll be through song and through music, through the art. I just see you leading a group of people and they're going to come out of something and go to a new place and, and I just, and just relish it. And if, I don't I don't, I said if because I could be wrong on this. But if an analytical spirit ever tried to get you to be so uh, science oriented that you try to figure out everything that God's trying to do, you try to break it down like it's math, I'm here to tell you you can't do that. So I turned the analytical switch off of you tonight in the name of Jesus. And I turned the faith switch on. Whoo! <laughs> you won't be able to strategize and figure everything out, but just know there's nothing too hard for God in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 If your kidneys are not operating the way they're supposed to operate, in the name of Jesus, I command your kidneys to come back into functioning order right now. Their creative order, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, may they produce everything that is needed right now by the authority of the Word of God and the power that's in the name of Jesus. If that was yours, give the Lord a wave offering right now. Father, you gave me, a, I feel to pray for some ministries right now. Father, you gave us a miracle building in Johnson City. There's other people here that need a miracle house. They need a miracle building, a miracle office. They're believing you for real estate. They're believing you for property. And I just thank you because if you did it for me, you can do it for anyone. And we just speak miracle buildings into existence right now. Miracle homes into existence right now. Miracle transportation. I, I hear transportation. We speak it into existence right now. And we say nothing is too hard for God. Pastor, am I okay? Okay, I'm, I'm just checking. You gotta be under authority for it to flow. For those of you that come to this altar, I wanna ask you to raise your hands in the presence of God. I'm gonna pray the prayer of faith the way I was taught to do, the way I know to do. And I'm, I, I'm gonna ask you to respond in faith tonight. If it's not your custom, then just humor me tonight because it's my custom i grew up in a shouting church and tonight we're gonna shout and praise victory into our lives when i finish this prayer and i say the word now i want you to shout like the walls of Jericho are about to fall right now. I want you to shout like that child is about to be delivered. I want you to shout like the devil that's been fighting you for the last four years just tapped out and say, no more, no more. I won't touch you. I won't afflict you. I won't talk about you. I won't gossip about you. I just believe. I just believe that if tonight we would act in faith, I just believe tonight the walls are coming down. When I shout now, you shout unto God with a voice of triumph and watch victory fill this room. By the authority of the Word of God, by the power that's in the name of Jesus, I take authority over sin, sickness, and disease. And in the name of Jesus, I command you, be healed, be delivered, be set free. Right now!
I want to do one more thing. Tony said before he leaves tonight, he wants to be prayed for. So I'm going to ask you to stand right there in the middle. I'm going to follow you. I want all of our prayer team that prays before service. I want those of you that come out of that upper room, and I want the ministers that are here. I want Pastor Adam. I want all of you guys just to join me right here. And we're just going to believe. Yeah, he's going to grab his phone. We're going to believe not only that God is going to do a miracle through him in Texas, I want you to believe with that 5,000 soul harvest. And listen, guys, I need you to call on heaven right now. I need you to lift your voices, and I need you to come before the Lord right now in his throne. I want everyone in this congregation to stretch your hands toward him right now. Hallelujah. Yes, Father. God, in the name of Jesus, we declare, God, God, that you have already won this battle, God. I declare, God, that you go before him. You make the crooked places straight and the mountains is a plain. I pray a hedge of protection around his family. I pray a hedge of protection, God, around the attack of the enemy. I serve you an eviction notice. Satan, you have lost. We evict you in Jesus' name. Your cause is lost. We command you to go and take your hands off of this family. We command you to take your hands off of this property and all the plan of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, I call in the souls of the border. I call in the souls of the border. I call in revival in the border. God, set it ablaze for your glory. Set it ablaze, God, in the name of Jesus. God, give them an unprecedented revival of miracles, God. Open the blinded eyes. Set the captives free. God, raise the dead spiritually, Lord. Raise them in Jesus' name. I pray for more freedom in the spirit than they could possibly imagine. Go before them, Lord. Go before them, Lord. Go before them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we declare it, God. We declare it, God. We declare it, God. We declare it over them in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, let it be so. Let it be so. Let it be so. I want all of you just to declare in faith it is done. Declare it right now. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. just had someone believes a prophetic word that we need to pray right now for the cartel to be saved so we're going to ask God for greater things right now yes save the people but save those creating some of the trafficking save those creating some of the trouble God God used to give God used to give Charles Finney all kinds of miracles. He would go into a city and the gangs would be saved. So we're going to believe for that same anointed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare God a hedge of protection. We, God, we declare a hedge of protection and a cloud of witnesses to show up. We declare that angels from the north, the south, the east, and the west, let seraphims gather. Let cherubim gather. Let archangels gather in the name of Jesus. And God, we declare that the strongholds over the cartel are broken. That the strongholds over their mind, we come against principalities and powers and rulers and hosts in the mighty name of Jesus and we declare God for salvation God God that you'll take the same power that was working against us and let it work for the kingdom father God save the drug addict and the drug dealer in Jesus name save the trap those being trafficked and the trafficker save them in Jesus name let there be a grace and a mercy poured out on the borders God that will save the least among the least and the hardest of hearts we declare it in Jesus name hallelujah God we come against the spirit of fear we come against the spirit of intimidation we come against the spirit of confusion and we pray for clarity and 
boldness in Jesus' name. We declare, Father, God, that a hedge of protection and a spirit of boldness. God, I pray the spirit of David over, over my brother, God. I pray the spirit of David over, to, over Tony Suarez, Lord. Put a slingshot in one hand and the sword of Goliath in the other. God, put a slingshot in one hand and the sword of Goliath. Let him decapitate the enemy in Jesus' name. We declare, God, that you are the ruler of it all. God, give the miracles, unprecedented miracles in Jesus' name. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. Hear my word, my son. For you will go with an entourage that I have set before you. You will never be alone, even for seconds. For I have sent my angels to guard you. And I will show you the vision, declares the Lord. For from tip to tip, their wings touch. And you are under the hoopah, says the Lord. You are under the talit of God, says the Lord. As the archangel's wings touch over the, as the cherubim's wings touch over the mercy seat, so shall you be overshadowed, says the Lord. You shall walk under not the tent that you've erected, but you shall walk under the hoopah, the tent of the Lord, declares the Lord God Almighty. Angels will be the doorposts before you and behind you, and their wings shall touch everywhere you go their presence will be with you this says the Lord go not in your own might or strength but I have already gone before you the land has already been conquered says the Lord you will take off your shoes and be upon holy ground for I have already sent the angels in and they have conquered this border for this great union with God get ready for a preparation day because I will come to you and visit you in your dreams says the Lord and I will prepare you to step upon holy ground it has never belonged to the enemy I have already conquered it for this mighty move says the Lord of hosts hallelujah hallelujah raise your hands and give God praise right now hallelujah we bless you Lord we bless you Lord we bless you Lord we bless you Lord hallelujah 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 now, Lord, you've declared that you will visit him in his dream. I pray, God, for clarity. I pray, God, that he will see this border on fire. And he will see that it's already been conquered by the Lord. And everywhere he moves, you have already stepped a step ahead of him. Father, visit him as you promised. Show him that he has been called to a holy place by a holy God to conquer a holy land. And we declare it for your glory. We declare it for your glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. God, a place where nations meet is a place where angels meet. Hallelujah. God, you said that I will give the angels of the Lord and they shall surround you and deliver you, God. Let them encamp round about this entire event for your glory. We give you praise, Father. We give you praise. Hallelujah. One more time, put your hands together and let's bless the Lord. Let's bless the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. I, I just want to say one more thing before you leave tonight. If the Lord tells you to sow into this man, we're going to bless him well tonight. But if the Lord tells you to sow into this church that he just started, if he tells you to sow into this revival on the border, be obedient tonight. It could unlock a miracle for you. So I just, I just want to tell you, I want, I'm encouraging you to just hear from the Lord. And whatever the Lord tells you to do, be obedient in that because it's gonna, it can unlock a miracle for you. I think you're standing in one of those moments with God right now. Praise the Lord. Can you give God praise for everything he's done tonight? Hallelujah. Wow, what a night. What a night.
And uh, let me just say that tomorrow is going to be a dynamic day at ISO. And if you don't have plans, now we already have a full house. I'm telling you, we've already got, we're, we got chairs from wall to wall already. But we can put out more. If you just want to drop whatever you're doing and show up at ISO, be there in the morning for a full day of evangelism and teaching. You're going to hear some of the greatest speakers in evangelism that you'll ever hear in your life. And you'll be a part of the beginning of the, of the One Million Soul Initiative. It all begins tomorrow morning, and you can be a part of that. God bless you. Go with the Lord. Let me speak a blessing over you as you leave. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to, be, to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's the